So today I want to talk about 10 YouTube musicians who have influenced me through the years. Now, I thought about it and I really didn't want to make a list where I went from 10 to 1. It just didn't feel right. So instead, I'm going to do it chronologically. And of course, there are so many incredible musicians out there who put their content out on YouTube that making this list was really hard. So I focused on artists who continue to push me to become better and influence me in uh, more ways than one. So way back in 2006 or 7, I started my first YouTube channel. I didn't upload music at the time or covers, but around 2007, I came across this duo called Fiomili. Fiomili are two sisters called Fiona and Emily who uploaded the most incredible harmonious covers at the time. It was a lot of uh, McFly and the Beatles and just classic tunes that everyone loves. And there was no schedule, just every now and then you'd just see a burst of videos come out and then they'd stop and disappear and everyone would wait for them to do it again. I think the first cover of theirs that I saw was eight days a week and I absolutely loved it and kind of went down the rabbit hole of looking for covers of other songs I knew. And before I knew it, I was looking at the songs that I didn't know because I liked their sound so much. And through the years, I'd always go back to see if they'd upload something new. And every now and then they would. And it was always great. They're incredible musicians and I still love them. Now, a little later, it must have been 2007 or 8, I came across a musician called The Brook. This was the time when everyone on YouTube had these usernames and it was cool and it wasn't all official and uh, Google controlled. The Brook uploaded these hauntingly beautiful covers where you didn't really see her face and there was a lot of reverb and echo. It might have influenced the way I make videos now since I uh, kind of drench everything in reverb. And I think the first cover I saw her do was Street Spirit. I remember a couple of guys covered Street Spirit at a talent show at my school at the time. And when I looked up Radiohead's version, it didn't sound as boomy and echoey as their version. So eventually I came across the Brook's version and I absolutely loved it again. I found myself going down the rabbit hole of all her videos, and I saw that she covered other songs that I loved, which is a common theme with a lot of other YouTubers that I love. I tend to find if a YouTube musician covers one song I like, they'll usually cover other songs I like, and they might even cover a song that I don't know that I'll learn to love. And so was the case with The Brook, since she covered a song called The Lone Wolf or Lone Wolf by Kathleen Edwards, and I grew to love Kathleen Edwards after that, and yeah, The Brook was just really inspirational and beautiful in her way. And then for quite some time she disappeared and everyone worried and no one knew what happened to her. And a couple years later she just suddenly uploaded a video and she was still great. She covered Society by Eddie Vedder. And at the time I happened to be getting into Eddie Vedder so it's kind of weird how things like that happen. So a few years passed and I went off to university. And while I was at university I decided to get way more into music and actually do something with the songs I'd been writing and maybe play live every now and then. So I delved back into the world of YouTube covers, and I discovered Mike Massé. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. If you've watched a good amount of YouTube covers, you know who this guy is. He has one of the most beautiful, soaring voices you've ever heard. You kind of get flashbacks of Kansas and Journey and Boston, all those big rock vocal bands. But at the same time, he could do the most beautiful renditions of songs by Simon and Garfunkel and Neil Young. I personally came across him doing YouTube covers, which were really great, and I also loved his cover of Paint It Black. Although his most well-known one is probably Africa by Toto. And he keeps making videos which are all great, but I have to mention that Jeff Hall, the guy who played bass with him, was really excellent, and I loved that duo. There was just a nice chemistry there, and it just felt real. I can't remember what the sound was in the back, but it was like at some pizza place, and it just, it just all sounded really good and seemed like a good time. It made everyone wish they were really there. So around the time I discovered Mike Massé, I picked up a guitar myself and taught myself to play. And I soon realized that my live performances were nowhere as clean and crispy as his. My vocal wasn't like a soaring eagle's. So I turned to grunge and blues and country, which I always loved. And I began looking up older songs. And in doing so, I discovered Blue Dean Carcione. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but the guy is absolutely incredible. He plays ukulele. He lives in Italy. He covers old tunes like The Ballad of Jesse James or I Want to Be in the Cavalry or I'll Fly Away. And every now and then he'll throw in something like, girls just want to have fun. And no matter what he does, it's absolutely flawless. He's also an incredible songwriter. Whenever I hear his stuff, I get addicted and have to listen to a whole playlist of his. And yeah, he's not as big as some of the other YouTubers here, but if you don't know him, please check him out. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's got this gravelly, beautiful voice against that kind of high ukulele sound. It's just great. A little after discovering Blue Dean Carcione, my mind was split in two ways. I wanted to cover things that I loved that were bluesy and old and grungy and whatever. And at the same time, I thought maybe 
I can apply what I like to more popular songs like Gnarls Barkley's Crazy. And in doing that, I discovered Corey Huvel, who is the perfect combination of those two things. The guy is an acoustic guitar virtuoso with the intensity of Stevie Ray Vaughan and John Mayer in his vocals and his guitar playing. And whatever he does just feels really intense, clean cut, and crisp. And slowly I started seeing people use microphones in their videos and things started getting more professional in a way. And the cool thing about him is, is he still uploads every now and then. He follows that old YouTube style of you never know when he's going to upload and usually it's pretty great. And it was around that time that I started uploading some uh, less than mediocre covers, but I had a good time and it was fun and that's what it was about. And around the time that everyone seemed to be uploading fun little covers on YouTube and just making a fool of themselves or showing how talented they were, Autopilot came along. Now, Autopilot was unlike anything I'd seen at the time. Autopilot really took things to another level in the sense that he was a really good guitarist, a good singer, his production skills were good, and he was always pushing himself to make a great video. And unlike anyone I'd seen before, he uploaded consistently. But in doing so, the quality didn't go down. Every single video was really, really good. So when you come across someone like Autopilot, it definitely inspires you, but it can discourage you in the sense that you feel you can't compete with that. At the time, I didn't have half the production equipment he had. I still don't. And I didn't have his skills either. But I kept making videos and having a good time and writing my own songs because I enjoyed it. And in the process of writing original songs and looking up other people's original songs, I came across a song called 16 by Orla Gartland. I must have listened to it about 10 times in a row when I first heard it. I just loved how down to earth it was. It wasn't about crazy production value. It wasn't about being a virtuoso. It was just real good songwriting. Of course, a lot of people caught on to her because she did a cool version of Hey Ya, uh, and uh, she did some nice Bon Iver covers, and yeah, she did cool covers. Orla is so much more than a cover artist, though, because while a cover might hook someone in, they stay because of her originals. She's an absolutely phenomenal songwriter. Aside from 16, she wrote songs like The Ground, or Devil on My Shoulder, or uh, Whispers in Time, or um, Clueless, or... Why Am I Like This, or um, Roots. Uh, she recently released one called Oh God, which I haven't listened to yet, but I will. All in all, I can't remember all her songs because she writes so many good ones. I was fortunate enough to go to one of her gigs in 2014, along with my girlfriend. We both loved it. I also bumped into her when we lived in Brighton. She's just got this electric personality that stretches across any room and uh, across the internet, obviously. To me, she feels like a kick of adrenaline every time I listen to her. She makes me want to get back in the studio and work. So around that time on YouTube, things felt so balanced. There were really good songwriters and cool cover artists and pop icons and guitar virtuosos. And speaking of guitar virtuosos, that's when I discovered Josh Turner. Again, if you're really into listening to YouTube covers and such and you don't know this guy, I don't know where you've been. He's a flashback to so many eras in that he brings the best of every musician to you. He really hones his craft. He's pretty consistent. He's an incredible songwriter. He seems to pick up any instrument and play it really well. Although I'd say the guitar is definitely his primary instrument. I, like so many others, came across him when he was playing a cover of Sultans of Swing, playing rhythm and lead at the same time and singing and doing it better than most people. Although when you look back at it, he seems so much better now. And that's really what I love about him. He's constantly improving himself, improving the video quality, improving the audio quality. He's always pushing himself to create higher quality content. And somehow he seems to live in some fantasy land where everyone around him is an incredible musician too, like Carson McKee or Reyna Del Cid, who are also incredible songwriters and musicians. I always thought if Clapton and McCartney had an American kid, it would look like him and sound like him too. Although it's really not fair to compare him to anyone because he's one of a kind and brings the best of so many artists to you. And on that note, I've also learned a lot of new songs from him, which, which is great. So many people think that they want their favorite YouTube musician to cover songs they know, but the truth is, learning something new is so much more valuable. Now, I have to admit, I've already named eight musicians, and I discovered them between 2007 and 2013, more or less. And I still listen to them a lot. There were certainly other great ones out there, but the things that seemed to succeed the most after that were either overly produced and auto-tuned, incredible virtuosos, or, you know, just ten guys playing a guitar. And all of that thing didn't really appeal to me, but in the midst of it, I discovered a girl called Alice Christensen. Now, although she's immensely popular, the thing that appeals to me about her is that she just keeps things so simple and calm. In the midst of all these virtuosos and overproduced things, she just performs a song like, like anybody would, just sitting in the corner of their house or just chilling on a Tuesday night. She truly is a minimalist in that she can take a really jazzy song or a, a song by John Mayer like something like Olivia and keep it simple, even leave the mistakes in, and it's still enjoyable to listen to because she's just so peaceful and serene in her way. 
So she definitely reminded me why I love to keep things simple. And finally, a couple years ago, I discovered Larkin Poe. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a blues fanatic. And one day I happened to be looking up a cover of Howling Wolf's Spoonful. And I found a cover by Megan and Rebecca Lovell, the uh, Larkin Poe sisters. <laughs> and it just melted my face off. I mean, truly, whenever I want to remind myself how much I suck, <laughs> I go listen to Larkin Poe. I mean, these girls have it all. They're incredible vocalists. They're incredible instrumentalists. They write great songs. They know about what they're doing. I think I can safely say I've listened to every one of their covers. And they were also one of my most listened to artists on Spotify this past year. I think they were nominated for a Grammy. Really, they're one of these artists that I, I can't find the right words to describe. You have to listen to them yourself. They're they're powerful. So those are my top 10 chronologically. I love that YouTube is a space where musicians can share covers they love and their original music and we can all discover each other in that manner. There are so many people who are yet to be discovered. I should mention that some of these guys might have started before the other. I'm just naming them in the order that I discovered them. For example, I think Josh Turner started way before a lot of these other people. And of course Larkin Poe have been active musicians for a long time. Nevertheless, the point of this is I am incredibly grateful that YouTube has introduced me to so many beautiful, talented musicians. And I wish I could have named them all in this video, but it's just impossible. I'm subscribed to hundreds. So for now, I'm going to just leave you with the links in the description to the artists if you want to check them out. And yeah, let me know what YouTube artists inspire you. Thanks for watching and listening.